What explains the silence of life in the universe? When astronomers peer out into the cosmos, they see many wondrous things. Stars going supernova, black holes devouring entire planetary systems, and bizarre, fantastical phenomena we cannot yet explain. But there's one thing we have never observed. Life. We've not seen so much as a flicker of an advanced civilization out there. No signals, no ships, no signs whatsoever that there's anything else out there apart from ourselves. So why is that? Where is everyone? What explains the silence of life in the universe? Number three, everyone's dead. The Fermi paradox describes the contradiction between our lack of extraterrestrial contact and estimates for how likely it is that other beings exist somewhere in the universe. This assumption that aliens are probably out there is based on several concrete observations we've made about the cosmos. First, we know that there are billions of sun-like stars in our galaxy, and it is probable that planets which are similar to Earth orbit some of these stars. The Kepler telescope found 10 just last month with one being smack bang in the habitable zone of its parent star. In 2013, astronomers using Kepler data estimated there were 40 billion Earth-sized planets in our Milky Way alone. So, if just 0.00001% of these contain life, we'd have 400 potential worlds to contact, seduce, and eventually make sweet love to. However, many of these planets and stars are much older and younger than our solar system. Therefore, if life has evolved on any of them, they should either have a massive head start on humanity or a huge disadvantage. If it's the latter, then we have no hope of contacting them as they'll be too primitive to respond. But if it's the former, you would expect their inhabitants to have discovered interstellar travel by now. And after thousands of years of development, their craft should also be able to move between stars and possibly galaxies at a pace approaching light speed. But this assumption is based on the expectation that an alien race could survive long enough to achieve such things. Professor Brian Cox believes it is simply not possible for a civilization to reach high enough levels of technology alongside a political system stable enough to handle it. Just think about some of the things we're on the cusp of developing nanotechnology, genome editing, automated machinery. Would you trust our current world governments with these advanced technologies? I wouldn't trust them with a Nerf gun and a pea shooter, let alone a swarm of nanobots. Cox believes that most, if not all, advanced civilizations wipe themselves out long before they develop the ability to contact other worlds. This would make advanced technology a crucial part of the Great Filter which describes a series of trials any race must endure in order to survive. Over a long enough timeline, a handful of extraterrestrial species may end up passing this filter and others further along the way. But eventually, all things must come to an end. And perhaps, due to the size of the universe, it is inevitable that any civilization which does become an advanced species simply runs out of time. Number two, we're doing it wrong. Mankind has been looking for alien signals for 80 years. In the context of the universe, that's a fraction of an iota of a blink of an eye. Given what we know about the intermittent nature of civilized life in the universe, it seems possible that we simply haven't been searching for long enough. We'd have to get extremely lucky to catch an advanced race before it blinks out of existence. And to increase our chances, Perhaps we'd better change our approach. For a start, we may be looking in entirely the wrong places. Space is unfathomably huge. Even if we knew transmissions were being made from a certain planet and a certain star system, we'd still find it hard to lock down a consistent reception despite knowing its origin. So, what hope do we have of finding a signal that we are attempting to locate entirely through chance? Also, since the Milky Way is 100,000 light years across, any signals limited to the speed of light will take 100 millennia to reach us. That doesn't seem particularly efficient. 
So perhaps another kind of communication technique has been developed by races more advanced than us. And if so, this poses us with yet another problem. It is highly likely that the kind of signals we are looking for and the type being put out by aliens are not the same thing. Radio waves were only discovered on Earth in the 1880s, and since then we've added other forms of communication to our repertoire. But what's next? Are there other ways of communicating which we're unaware of? Have we detected the full gamut of signals available, or must we rely on the stars themselves for communication? Can we use black holes to rearrange a whole heap of suns into a giant cosmic light bright? Humanity may be too underdeveloped to decipher the communications of extraterrestrial beings. It'd be like going back to the Dark Ages and asking someone to find a Wi-Fi signal. For all we know, Earth may have been bombarded with alien messages asking if we're okay, if we want to hook up, or if we're happy with our solar system insurance. But because we can't detect or decipher them, we remain oblivious to their existence. Number 1. They're ignoring us. Intelligent life seems as though it has an intrinsic desire to communicate with others. There is a fundamental urge within conscious beings to make their presence known and to exchange information. But is this a trait which applies to all intelligent life? Or might we eventually develop some restraint? Is it possible that aliens are aware of us, but they're content to remain hiding in the shadows? This is the most logical conclusion we can come to if we exclude the other two entries on this list. If a significant number of alien races do live long enough to communicate with other worlds, and they are smart enough to make their messages backwards compatible, then the only reason we would not have heard from them is because they do not wish to speak to us. It seems unlikely that a planet as noisy as ours would remain undetected for long. Therefore, it is fair to assume that there's a chance that one or more civilizations have found us. And if they have, they're choosing to remain on the periphery, for now. Perhaps they have judged us a potential threat. Maybe we're too attractive and they know they won't be able to help themselves. Or is it the case that all civilizations who gain contact abilities also become self-aware of their potential impact upon newly developed worlds? We humans were once content to trample all over the globe and stamp our footprints wherever we liked. But today, we try to avoid interfering with uncontacted tribes. We make an effort to preserve isolated biospheres, and we're even considering how much we'll contaminate worlds like Mars, Europa, and Titan with our probes and rovers. So, if we primitive folk are thinking about this stuff now, surely an advanced race would do the same. This makes it all the more likely that our planet has been found. We are known about in the universe. Our world is being watched. It is being studied. And it is being judged. So if that's true, when will these extraterrestrial beings make themselves known? When will mankind finally be allowed to make contact with our ever-present alien eavesdroppers? We're going to try to figure this out in our bonus video... What are they waiting for? Which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it, 
come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality, visited by only a select few, whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video chemicals of reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.